Welcome. In this episode, we're going to take a look at California's Kern River. The Kern River begins high up in the Sierra Nevada mountains on the western slope of Mount Whitney, the highest mountain in the lower 48 states. It's the only major river in the Sierra Nevada mountains that runs north-south. Before the river turns west into the southern San Joaquin Valley, it passes through Lake Isabella. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers constructed Isabella Dam in 1953 for the purposes of flood control and to store irrigation water. In typical years, the river becomes dry as it runs through the city of Bakersfield. This is because the water is diverted into a series of irrigation canals from weirs that are located across the city. In the 1800s, before its waters were diverted, the Kern River flowed into two lakes at the end of the San Joaquin Valley called Buena Vista Lake and Kern Lake. During really wet flood years like 1938, 1969, and 1983, the Kern River will run to the north and will eventually reach the Tulare Lake Bed. When this happens, the total length of the Kern River is about 195 miles. This is a view of Mount Whitney from Lone Pine on May 1st, 2023. It's the highest mountain in the contiguous United States at an elevation of 14,505 feet. It can be seen that a large amount of the record 2023 snowpack remains at the high elevations. The large area of the 2023 snowpack can be seen in this satellite photo. The depth of the snow reached over 10 feet in the higher elevations. As temperatures continue to rise in the coming weeks, the record snowpack will melt and the Kern River will continue to rise. The Kern River watershed is a very large area and high water levels in the Kern River may be sustained for weeks and months to come. This map shows the location of a USGS river gauge on the North Fork of the Kern River near the town of Kernville. This graph shows the water level on the Kern River at the town of Kernville over the last few days of April as temperatures warmed. Warming temperatures accelerated the melt of the snowpack and increased the flow rate of the river. In the coming weeks, the risk of flooding downstream on the Kern River will depend on how fast the warming temperatures melt the remaining snowpack. This air photo of Lake Isabella on May 1st shows that the lake is nearly full. However, the Army Corps of Engineers is letting water out nearly as fast as it's coming in. The reason for this is to leave a little bit of space in the reservoir to take a surge of snowmelt if the need arises. This shows Isabella Dam as it looked when it was built in 1953. The original emergency overflow is indicated by the yellow arrow. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is in the process of completing a major upgrade to Isabella Dam. The project includes seismic retrofitting and the addition of a second emergency overflow. The second emergency overflow is much larger than the first one and it includes a unique labyrinth weir. This is a view of the new weir from the lake level on May 1st, 2023. The enormous channel cut through the granite bedrock for the new emergency overflow can be seen. If the 2023 snowmelt overwhelms Lake Isabella, the new emergency overflow will be ready for it. The Keysville Recreation Area is directly downstream from Isabella Dam. It was a gold mining area in the 1800s. Today, it's a popular mountain biking area and also an area where whitewater rafters launch their boats into the Kern River. Directly below Isabella Dam on May 1st, when the Army Corps of Engineers was releasing about 6,500 cubic feet per second, this is how the Kern River looked. Further down the river, about halfway to the valley floor, the Kern River Canyon narrows. As the canyon narrows, the river narrows, and the velocity of the water 
increases accordingly. The river has achieved a very sad nickname over the years. It's become known as the Killer Kern. Reportedly, on average, about six people accidentally die in the Kern River every year. The biggest problem is in the summertime. People visit the canyon in the hot weather and they're not familiar with the dangers in the river. Unfortunately, too many people don't realize just how fast the water is moving and they overestimate their swimming abilities. For many of the drowning victims, it may be days before their bodies are discovered and recovered far downstream. Before our journey continues on to the valley floor, one last comment about the high elevation portion of the Kern River. On November 24, 1987, portions of the North and South Fork of the Kern River were designated as wild and scenic under the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. The North Fork Kern River Canyon within the Golden Trout Wilderness may be the longest linear glacially sculpted valley in the world. After it exits the canyon and hits the valley floor, the Kern River spreads out and slows down. Father Francisco Garces was the first non-native explorer known to cross the Kern River. During the Spanish colonial period, on May 1st, 1776, he was searching for a shorter route from Sonora, Mexico to Monterey, California. He named the river Rio de San Felipe. There's a historical marker at the approximate location where he crossed the river at the base of the Kern River Canyon. John C. Fremont's third expedition to the west camped on the Kern River for several weeks in December 1845 and January 1846. John C. Fremont changed the Spanish name for the river to the Kern River in 1846. He named it for Edward Kern, the cartographer on his expedition. Although the campsite is underneath Lake Isabella, there is a historical marker on the side of the lake. In 1866, a portion of Tulare County broke away and named itself Kern County after the river. The five red circles on this map show the locations of five weirs across the town of Bakersfield that we're gonna take a look at. Continuing down the Kern River, we come to the Carrier Canal Weir. The Carrier Canal takes a big bite out of the Kern River water supply and it transports the water to Agland to the south of the Kern River. FEMA's flood map service shows that flooding is possible on both the north and south side of the river at this location. This is a view from the Weir looking upstream First, looking down the Carrier Canal and then panning to the left and eventually looking at the weir that controls flow onward down the Kern River. Weirs are like small dams. The force of gravity is used to direct the flow of water. This is a look down the Kern River from the weir and you can see the Kern River still has a high level, even though a lot of water is also going down the Carrier Canal. The next weir that we come to is the Callaway Canal Weir, and this is a look downstream. This is a map view of the weir, and you can see that in a normal year, the Callaway Canal takes a really big bite out of the Kern River. It's such a big bite that most times the river can be dry downstream from this weir. The FEMA flood map shows that most of the flood prone areas around this weir are protected by levees. This is the view of the Kern River looking upstream from the Callaway Canal Weir. The river takes a big drop here and it gets pretty wide. The velocity of the river on the downstream side of the weir is pretty high and it's protected by fencing. Continuing on downstream before the next weir is reached, the river passes by Yokuts Park. The park is located on the south bank of the river and immediately west of the California Highway 99 bridge. 
A plaque located at the park describes how the Kern River between the mouth of the canyon and Buena Vista Lake was home to four different Yokuts tribes before European settlement began. The next three weirs that we're going to look at are located on the Kern River channel that was cut during the flood of 1867. Through the 1870s, this channel was known as New River. After the 1867 flood, the Old River Channel became known as Old River. Today, the Old River Channel is the approximate location of the Stein Canal. Before the flood of 1862, most of the Kern River flow went directly south through a swampy area without a well-defined river channel. After the enormous statewide flood of 1862, most of the flow of the Kern River moved from the swampy area to the Old River Channel. This map from 1877 shows the relative location of the city of Bakersfield and the various Kern River channels at the time. At this time, agricultural diversion of river water was in its early stages in Kern Lake and Buena Vista Lake still contained lots of water. The next weir is the Coffee Road Weir. This is the view looking downstream where the river crosses underneath the Coffee Road Bridge. This map view shows a dry riverbed while the adjacent canals are loaded with water. This FEMA map shows that flood prone areas adjacent to the weir are protected by levees. Looking upstream at the weir, you can see that preparations have been made to handle the 2023 snowmelt. A series of very large black siphon tubes have been placed over the earthen portion of the weir to allow increased flow rate through the weir without eroding the earthen dam. This weir includes a warning sign to protect people from entering the weir this downstream view shows how the large siphon tubes look that cross the earthen portion of the weir. This is a view of the Bellevue weir looking downstream. The weir includes a pedestrian bridge integrated into the Riverwalk Park. The bridge can be clearly seen in this map view of the weir. The FEMA flood map shows that flood prone areas near the weir are protected by levees. This is a photograph of the Bellevue weir and the Stockdale Highway Bridge as it appeared around 1911. At the time in 1911, the Kern River still had enough water flow to keep the Buena Vista Lake full. A man-made levee on the east side of Buena Vista Lake gave it a straight edge. The levee allowed the swamp to the east and Kern Lake to be drained and converted to permanent farmland. In 1911, Buena Vista Lake was still alive with fish. One news report mentioned a huge fish run from Buena Vista Lake to the Bellevue Weir. The weir was filled with fishermen from Bakersfield who were filling up barley sacks with lake trout and thicktail chub. This map shows the former range of the thicktail chub. In the 1800s, the thicktail chub was the most common fish in California. The fish was a big part of the diet of Native Americans in the Central Valley. It became extinct in 1957 due to the draining of its habitat and competition from non-native invasive fish. The Pioneer Canal is one of the canals connected to the Bellevue Weir. The Pioneer Canal has a jumper connection to the Cross Valley Canal. The Cross Valley Canal can be used to move water from either the west to east or the east to west side of the valley. The Cross Valley Canal was temporarily dammed up recently to allow some maintenance on the connection to the Pioneer Canal. With the Pioneer Canal back in business, this shows water flowing from the Pioneer Canal into the Cross Valley Canal and heading west. On the west side of the valley, the water can either be placed into the California Aqueduct or it can go into the Kern County Water Bank. The Kern Water Bank involves a lot of large ponds surrounded by levees on the west side of the valley that allow the groundwater to be recharged during wet years and then water can be pumped from the ground during dry years. This is a look 
upstream from the Bellevue Weir to the northwest, outlets to the Pioneer Canal and the Rio Bravo Canal can be seen. Here's uh, another look at the upstream side of the Bellevue Weir, uh, looking directly up the Kern River and then panning over to the weir and the pedestrian bridge itself. This is a view of the weir and the pedestrian bridge from the downstream side. The river is very wide at this point and a lot of water can be seen flowing through. Before we move on to the fifth and final weir, this is a look at the Rio Bravo Canal that flows to the northwest away from the Bellevue Weir. This is a view of the McClung Weir looking downstream. This is another view from a higher altitude. The weir is surrounded by groundwater recharge ponds. During wet years, a lot of water is redirected into these ponds. This is a map view of the weir that shows how the river is usually dry at this location. The FEMA flood map shows that flooding of the recharge ponds should be expected. However, levees protect nearby residential areas prone to flooding. This is a look at the weir that controls flow into the recharge ponds to the south of the river. A crew was busy with equipment removing debris from the weir that was blocking the flow. During long dry periods, a lot of brush and trash can accumulate in the river channel. When wet years hit, the debris gets picked up and moved downstream and plugs up weirs. This can lead to reductions in flow capacity, erosion of levees, and flooding of unintended areas. This is a close-up look at the upstream side of the McClung Weir. The water level height can be adjusted by sliding boards in and out of the weir. On this day, the boards were set very high and a lot of flow was being directed into the surrounding groundwater recharge ponds. The current flow rate on the Kern River shows just how significant the 2023 snowmelt will become. The weirs through the city of Bakersfield are redirecting significant flow to the surrounding canals. The surrounding canals are loaded with water However, so much water is coming down the Kern River from the 2023 snowmelt that there still is a lot left over to continue on downstream uh, westward from the city of Bakersfield. Further west, the Kern River reaches the California Aqueduct. Before canals were constructed beginning in the 1800s, the river would flow naturally to the south into Buena Vista Lake. During very wet years, when the lake would fill, the river would start flowing to the north through swampland on the west side of the valley and eventually it would reach the Tulare Lake Basin. After the Tulare Lake would fill up, it would reach its spill point to the north and continue flowing into the San Joaquin River and on to the San Francisco Bay. During the 1800s, the swamp land on the west side of the valley was drained with a canal on both the west side and the east side of the swampy area. After it was drained, it was converted to rich farmland, as can be seen in this satellite view. During wet flood years, the Kern River will flow through these canals and on to the San Francisco Bay. During the 1938 flood year, a group of four took a boat from Bakersfield to the San Francisco Bay. During the 1969 flood year, five people and two boats traveled from Bakersfield to the San Francisco Bay. During the 1983 flood year, two men in two kayaks paddled from Bakersfield to the San Francisco Bay. Today, the northern part of Buena Vista Lake is a county park. Buena Vista Aquatic Recreational Area supports fishing, boating, and camping. The two small lakes there are called Lake Evans and Lake Webb. The remaining portion of the former Buena Vista Lake remains as farmland. If the 2023 snowmelt accelerates rapidly and overwhelms the system, the water at the end of the Kern River can go three ways. 
It can go south into the former Buena Vista Lake. It can go west into the California Aqueduct, or it can go north into the Kern River flood channel. Reportedly, based on prior agreements, the river flow will not go into the former Buena Vista Lake bed. The two likely options are either into the aqueduct and or into the Kern River flood channel to the north. The Kern River flood channel travels underneath Interstate 5 just south of Lost Hills. It then passes under Highway 46 just to the east of Lost Hills and Interstate 5. These are some views of the flood channel from the Highway 46 bridge. Looking south from the bridge, it can be seen that the flood channel already has water in it and it is relatively clear at this point. Looking to the north of the Highway 46 bridge, it's another story. It can be seen that the flood channel is loaded with trash, debris, and brush. Time will tell how far the 2023 snowmelt will move through the Kern River and whether or not it reaches Tulare Lake.